Hello and welcome to the Nonsense of History News Week in Review. I'm your host, Reverend Pizza Body. Thank you for joining us. This week, a gunman in Nashville opens fire, killing four people and wounding a few others. Eventually, a nice young black gentleman was able to wrestle the gun away from scumbag Whitey. The black man is being recognized as a hero for stopping the gunman in between a reload of his weapon. I mean, what do you expect to happen when you go to a Waffle House? Either a crazy gunman is going to shoot you, or the poly, mono, and trans fats along with cholesterol will eventually take you out. One way is quick, the other is slow. You pick which one you want. Does any Waffle House patron think anything good will come out of going to a Waffle House? Perhaps maybe the only good thing that could come out of that nutritionally deficient experience is the diarrhea dump you're gonna take that could potentially clean out your intestines. That's about the only thing I could think of. The shooting prompted a call from Nashville Mayor David Briley to ask for stricter gun control. Perhaps Mayor Briley should be asking for stricter Waffle House control. I mean, how many Waffle Houses were complicit in making a fat older man bend over and gasp his last breath as he clutches his heart trying to say his last dying words, but he winds up sounding like a retarded boy who just wants a milkshake. After all, gun-related deaths are only a fraction of heart disease deaths in this country, so why don't you chew on that, Mayor Briley? Moving on to other related murder news, The Golden State Killer was finally caught this week after a multi-decade long search for the killer. Police were able to arrest the Golden State Killer after an online genia- after an online genial- after an online genealogy- after an online genealogy website had in their possession the killer's DNA. If this doesn't tell you about privacy, I don't know what will. If you give your DNA to one of these data mining companies, be prepared to deal with the consequences. If this killer eluded police for decades and then a genealogy website was able to identify him, what chance do the rest of us have? The Golden State Killer, or as I refer to him, The Republic of China Fornia Killer is 72 years old. This guy must feel so badly right now. Being caught and thrown in prison in your retirement years, that doesn't sound like fun at all. Instead of playing golf and getting a hole in one, he will be the one having his backside used as a hole for a fleshy hole in one by a large black gentleman who just wants his soap back. In other news, comedian Bill Cosby was found guilty on three counts of being a bad, bad, naughty, rapey boy. Cosby was accused of drugging women and then having his way with them. The Pudding Pop star reportedly would drug the women's drinks, then assault them sexually, and then make them watch Fat Albert outtakes while they were paralyzed by the roof and all. Cosby is facing up to 10 years for each count of assault. I will now do my famous Bill Cosby impression. Don't worry, sweetheart. I'm just going to pour you a little drink. Hey, hey, hey. Come get your drink, sweetheart. In entertainment news this week, the Duchess of Cambridge, or as I like to call her, some broad who got royally lucky, gave birth to a third child. I mean, can we please stop calling these tyrants royalty? 
This is the so-called year 2018. The United States and Great Britain are supposedly free nations. Why do we refer to these tyrants as royal queens and royal families? These are modern times we are living in. Kings and queens have gone the way of a groom of stool. We don't need this anymore. We can take our dumps all by ourselves and we can run this world without fake queens and pseudo royal families. These tyrannical characters have no place in this free world. In other entertainment news this week, Shania Twain, who has no relation to Mark Twain, who both, by the way, are fraudsters because neither of those names are their actual names, had to issue an apology this week because she said she would have voted for President Trump. I don't know why you would need to apologize for that, sweetheart. That is how you feel. Are you going to apologize for feeling a little teary-eyed while watching a romantic movie because you're genetically predisposed to being a little crybaby because of the inverted genitals you were given? No, you wouldn't. So stop being a coward and stand up for what you believe in. I do understand it, though. Those commie, bullying, spoiled little brat lefties can really do a number on your career if you don't agree with them. Moving on to sports. Blacks, basketball, whites, golf, baseball, and hockey, and no football because the season is over now. Moving on to weather now. On much of the East Coast, the weather will still be somewhat chilly at night and not so warm during the day. Dampness and humidity will be evident on most of the East Coast as ass cracks as it's terribly difficult to keep a dry ass on that side of the country. On the West Coast, we will see more sunshine with moderate temperatures. California in particular will have a 100% chance of overregulation and paternal government telling you what to do. The middle of the country will be somewhat warmer than last week, which isn't a surprise because that's what happens when you get close to summer. The temperature rises. We are now going to leave you with a happy feel-good story so you don't feel so dreadful and hopeless when you place your dumb head on the pillow tonight. A man named David Cox recently lost his dog. The dog was 17 years old when he passed. That's not the feel-good part. Just hold on a minute. Mr. Cox was so heartbroken about losing his dog that he wanted to get another pet, but he knew he couldn't handle a dog right away, so he decided to adopt a chicken. I kind of see the connection. Cox and Cox. Makes sense. After all, what's in a name? It's reported that the chicken runs and hides in fear whenever Mr. Cox has chicken for dinner. Having a pet chicken and then having chicken for dinner is like having a black friend and then campaigning for segregated water fountains. It just doesn't make sense. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your brow-beating host, Reverend Pizza Body. We will see you next time. So long for now. Bye. See ya.